Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your incredibly, extremely, amazingly, awesomely handsome science teacher. And in this video, we're going to talk about artificial selection. In other videos, I talk about evolution and also natural selection. And those are important to understand. And uh, they're really kind of foundational ideas and concepts in the science of biology. And in this video, we're going to talk about another way that animals and plants change. And that is called artificial selection, which is also called selective breeding. So, see, here's the dealio. Humans... Uh, we are, because we are intelligent and because we are uh, nosy and we are involved in so many things like farming and expanding our realm across the world, uh, we, we tend to influence in a very profound way the evolution of other species, many other species, through changing them and, and adapting them to our needs. In natural selection, we learned that species adapt to their environments in order to benefit themselves. So, for example, a, um, I don't know, a fish adapts to its environment so that it can be more effective at surviving in the pond where it lives, where they live, where that species lives over across thousands and thousands of years. Uh, or even millions of years. Uh, it, it, it adapts to be successful, to avoid predators, to be able to find food. And, to, and the more successful it is, the better it does. And so it uh, passes on its traits to future generations. That's called natural selection. And again, in that, uh, with whether it's natural selection or artificial selection, the process driving these changes all comes down to the mutations, the random mutations that occur in an organism's DNA. And I talk a lot about those uh, mutations that occur in both the evolution video and also in the natural selection video. But essentially, in a nutshell, you have DNA. Congratulations. You are the lucky owner of DNA. And it's all throughout your body. In every single cell in your body, your body is filled with delicious DNA. If you would like to see it, there's there are experiments you can do that actually uh, allow you to pull out your own DNA. It's kind of cool. And it's not very hard either. Go look them up. Uh, using household items, you can actually see your own DNA. Uh, and I totally got sidetracked because that's not what this video is about. So, uh, but there are, in, in your DNA, your DNA controls how your body grows. And whatever your DNA, it's code. And whatever your DNA says, that's how your body grows. So if you change the DNA code, you will change how a species or an organism grows. And DNA is copied every time your cells replicate. When one of your cells divides to make two cells, all of the DNA code is copied. And usually it's copied correctly, but sometimes it isn't. Sometimes it is copied incorrectly, and we call that a mutation. And most mutations don't do anything, and so they have no effect. Some of them are bad and cause, like, death or cancer or things to occur. And every once in a while, a mutation results in some sort of benefit to the animal or plant or life form. And if it is a benefit, if it is beneficial, then that animal is more adapted to its environment, and it is more able to get food or avoid predators or whatever, and so it is able to then survive better and pass those traits on to future generations. Typically, and this is what natural selection states, if that uh, benefits the species, then it will uh, probably survive and pass on those traits. In the case of artificial selection, though, or selective breeding, what happens is a little bit different. It still comes down to random mutations in the DNA. 
But now, instead of it being about whether or not those random mutations benefit the species itself, it comes down to whether or not those random mutations benefit us as humans, okay? Whether it benefits the humans. So if that mutation is in a cabbage or if it's in a dog or if it's in a tomato plant uh, and it benefits humans, then it is uh, picked, it's allowed to pass on. And the reason for that is because humans are meddlesome and we meddle with this species. So let me give you an example. Okay. Natural turkeys, turkeys, you know what a turkey is. They go gobble, 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 and they are delicious. And because they are delicious, humans like to eat them. And when humans first came across turkeys, well, I don't know when humans first came across turkeys, thousands of years ago, but when Europeans first came across turkeys, uh, they were like, oh, yummy. Give me some of that yummy turkey because they were in North America. And so turkeys take a long time to grow to maturity, like a couple of years. And that, and they produce a good amount of meat, but you know, it would be better if they produce more meat, right? So, and it would be better if they grew up faster because who wants to wait two years to eat a turkey? So what did humans do? They Instead of catching turkeys in the wild, which they started doing, but some people were like, you know what, let's let's farm these turkeys. So they took some turkeys, they took turkeys, and they put them on their farm, and they raised them. And the humans were like, oh, you know what, these are the biggest of the turkeys. Of all the baby turkeys that I got, these ones are the biggest. So I'm going to eat the other ones. And I'm going to take the biggest ones, and those are the ones that I am going to allow to reproduce together because I want to have the next generation of baby turkeys be even bigger. And then they, the next generation of turkeys comes along, and the farmer's like, okay, now, of all the baby turkeys, these are the biggest. And then the next generation, they do the same thing. And the next generation, they do the same thing. And over time... Each generation, random mutations that occur that result in turkeys being bigger and bigger and bigger or growing up faster, the farmer selects. Not, not because it gives the turkey an advantage in the environment, but because the farmer it gives the farmer an advantage. And so the farmer is the one selecting which turkeys, which traits, which random mutations that occurred will be the ones that are allowed to be passed on to future generations. And so across, you know, just a few hundred years, really, the turkeys have gone from being much smaller to being significantly bigger and having a lot more meat and growing up instead of taking a couple of years to grow up. And a turkey now can mature in about six months and they're white. They've lost all their coloration as a result. Well, think about how this is not an advantage in nature. Okay, turkeys are now so large that near the end of their lives, right before they're processed, right before, on a farm, domesticated turkeys, right before their heads are, you know, they're executed in the turkey guillotine, they are uh, so large that they can barely walk. And in fact, they're so big that they can't really even mate. The farmers like have to lift them up and help them because their body sizes have gotten so big that their little legs can't really sustain them anymore. But man, they have a lot of yummy, tasty meat that grows super fast. Would that really be something that would happen in nature? A An animal that is so big and plump and delicious with legs that don't allow it to move very well, just sitting on the forest floor. What's going to happen in nature to that kind of an animal? Along comes a fox, and what's he going to do? He's going to see that big, delicious turkey that can barely hobble around, and he's going to eat it. That would not be an advantage. Okay, so in nature, natural selection, that turkey, that giant uh, ball of meat, would be eaten very quickly and would not live to pass on those traits. But protected inside the fence of a farmer, uh, where the farmer is selectively breeding, what is allowed, which traits, which random mutations are allowed to be passed on, the traits that lead to bigger turkeys and more delicious turkeys that grow up quicker, those are the traits that are going to be passed on. And we call that artificial selection. Natural selection benefits the animal or the plant or whatever, the species itself. Artificial selection benefits humans. 
And this has happened all across many different species from animals like, uh, you know, we talked about turkeys and chickens and pigs. We've taken wild pigs and we've turned them into domesticated pigs um, and cows and all kinds of horses. All kinds of things have been adapted, including like plants, like uh, tomato plants and corn. Corn used to just be a grass. It was just a regular grass. And now it's this weird, freaky grass that grows these delicious ears of corn. Um, you know, cucumbers and cabbage and lettuce and squash, all kinds of things that have uh, come into being because humans have over many thousands of years picked the one that most benefits us and allowed that one to reproduce instead of the ones that benefit the species themselves. And these plants and animals would not fare so well on their own. If suddenly humans were removed from the earth tomorrow, all of these things that have been artificially selected through selective breeding, they would not do so well because they wouldn't have their human caretakers. The fences would be gone, the protective fences and the support. And within a very short period of time, they would all cease to exist because they would not survive in nature on their own. They need humans to help them. Another example are cute, adorable puppies, dogs. Yes, they are super de duper sweet. They are wonderful. I love dogs. I love my dog. Her name is Clara, and she is sweet and wonderful. And uh, they have been nat are artificially uh, selected art through artificial breeding by humans, starting with wolves, these vicious animals that uh, but have a lot in common with humans in that they live in similar types of families, packs, and they have similar emotions to humans. And humans are like, man, those wolves, I can totally, I can totes relate to those. They're, they're not sus at all. And so they took the, the, or the wolves and they bred them and bred them and bred them over thousands of years and created all kinds of dogs. Dogs that are to sit on your lap and be snuggled. And dogs that are for uh, herding sheep and dogs that are for protecting a tribe and dogs that are for hunting and dogs that have long ears that uh, drag around along the ground uh, so that they can smell scents. All kinds of dogs doing all kinds of jobs through artificial selection uh, over a very short amount of time. Humans picking the traits that we want to keep based on the benefits that we want rather than the benefits that benefit the animal themselves or plant. And again, it all comes down to random mutations that occur when cells are copied and whether or not those cells are advantageous or disadvantageous in the case of natural selection being advantageous to the species in the case of artificial selection being advantageous to us. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student so sign up subscribe to the channel and I release lots of videos also in addition to these ones lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics those ones you don't get to see my handsome face but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted and those ones are scripted so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah 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 the end uh, subscribe thank you goodbye